The Chief End of All Flesh is an article published in Theology Today, a peer-reviewed quarterly academic publication founded at Princeton Theological Seminary. It appeared in Volume 49 in 1992. The authors of the article are Stanley Hauerwas and John Berkman. You can find brief biographies of these two scholars in the video description. If you'd like to read the full text of Hauerwas and Berkman's paper, a link is provided below. The phrase chief end is a familiar one in Christian context. It is used in the first point of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. What is the chief end of man? The answer is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. The topic that Howarth and Berkman want to address is the chief end of all flesh, not just human beings, but animals as well. Animals will not manifest God's glory, Howarth and Berkman write, insofar as their lives are measured in terms of human interests, but only insofar as their lives serve God's good pleasure. The idea here is the uncoupling of animal purpose and value from subjective, even self-serving, human measurements. Howarth and Berkman are careful to not argue for animals on the basis of animal rights, a common tactic, because they believe that it is both unsustainable in the long run and insufficient from a Christian perspective. They start at the beginning with God's original creation, which they describe as being a part of the redemption and restoration narrative of Christianity. We might think of Romans 8 here, about creation being subject to frustration and longing to be free. The view of history and time accepted by Hauerwas and Berkman is based on the original peaceful kingdom of God in Eden and the future peaceful kingdom of Jesus in the new heaven and new earth. In this view, the ultimate end of all things is the achievement of this peaceable kingdom. This includes creation, which they understand as an act carried out for the purpose of creating a community of all flesh, human, and animal to glorify God a la Westminster Shorter Catechism. Creation is thus interpreted as a Christological and eschatological affirmation. This means that it relates and points both to Jesus Christ and to the end times. What does this mean for animals specifically? Because of the fall, Howarth and Berkman concede that ours is a world at war, and that no amount of nonviolence on the part of Christians will make it not so. What Hauerwas and Berkman do not concede is that Christians living in a world of war must follow the crowd. Christian vegetarianism, they predict, could be a witness to the world that God's creation is not meant to be a war with itself, whether the battles are human against animal or animal against animal. Thus, vegetarianism, with their view of creation in mind, becomes an act looking and striving toward the end things in the kingdom of God.